My name's Guy Kestevan. I've been a professional biking kit tester for over 25 years, and this is my quick tech talk around on the custom Bikes Brennan Fuel EXE 9.7 that I've been taking in full beast mode around the uh, beast trail here at the Cody Brennan Trail Centre, the original Welsh Trail Centre. So this is a bike, it's actually owned by Joe at Bikes Brennan, he's been super kind to uh, lend me to it and Cody Brennan is just a brilliant place for testing bikes but particularly kind of mid-weight high performance trailer bikes like this one so if you are wanting to test uh, the fuel the trek range range of e-bikes then uh, get in touch with bikes brennan here at cody brennan and they'll be able to sort you out with rentals but to be honest what a lot of you are probably thinking is are you sure this is an e-bike because if you look at that down tube and if you look at the frame layout it's pretty much identical to the fuel ex their standard meat powered trail bike but because you haven't got internal storage in the down tube. Instead, you've got a 360 watt hour removable battery in there. And then down at the base, you've got TQ's HRP50, Abs uh, unique uh, harmonic pin and ring motor. It doesn't work like a conventional motor, which means it's a lot quieter, a lot smoother, theoretically more durable and and in this case, super high density, lightweight motor. So the motor only weighs just over 1800 grams. The battery weighs over eight, just over 1800 grams. So combined, they're only adding about 3700 grams to the bike, which is why even with pedals on and a Lyric on the front and my fender on there, this bike only comes in at just over two key just over 20 kilos without the pedals on it be about 19 and a half and if you go for the top line models the 9.9 uh, .9 exe that actually weighs in at 17 and a half kilos so not as crazy light as the short travel scott or the short short travel rottweil at 15 and a half but as you can see you're getting a proper full-blooded trail bike here. So let's go into the specific details on the features, the geometry and the kit, and uh, that'll help you. So let's go into the specific details on the geometry, the features, and the kit on this bike. So as it is an e-bike, let's have a look at the e-bike side of things. As you can see, tiny little TQ motor in there. I mean, it's essentially a rotary motor. It fires in sequence on the various components inside it. It's it's not like a conventional gearbox motor either, so that makes it a lot quieter. And if you watch the live ride, it's it's totally unobtrusive uh, from an audio point of view. You can't even hear it over the tire noise and the flapping of my shorts. And then if you move up to the frame here, you've got this embedded OLED display on there. Gives you your battery display, your miles per hour, your average, your remaining time, your battery percentage, your remaining distance. And then, this is quite a nice feature, this uh, matches your power and the bike's power. Uh, because, it, you know, it's a power responsive system. You've got three different modes on it. And it tops out at a 300 watt assist. And it's a 50 newton meter uh, power motor. So, again, half half power compared to a full fat motor but a lot lighter and a lot quieter and then up on the bars here you've got that actuation rocker switch just a really neat way of controlling the motor and then if you haven't got enough power to get up the steepest hills or your legs have just given out completely you've even got a walk mode on there as well as well as being a lightweight motor and battery system you've also got this super light Full OCLV, Optimum Compaction Low Void, it's kind of Trek's proprietary carbon layup system. Full carbon frame, so both front and rear of the bike are carbon. And you can see it absolutely mimics the layout of the Trek Fuel EX conventional bike, as I said at the start. Which means you've got this rocker link here with the flip chip in the back there. We'll talk about the geometry in a second. And then main pivot just above and ahead of the uh, top of the main chain ring there. You've got the shock sitting in this little bridge across the base of the down tube there. And then at the back, you've got Trek's proprietary ABP pivot, uh, active, active braking pivot, they call it, but it also has a fair influence on the suspension as well. So actually when you look down on the bike, it actually bobs around quite a lot. 
but that's not evident in the way that it feels like it pedals very very neutral although on this bike uh, if you've watched the live road review already you'll know actually quite a tight tune on this fox float x shock here and i think it, you know it obviously speaks to the bike as a whole that it's a piggyback shock on here it's a 60 mil long stroke on a 205 mil long shock so you're getting a lot of uh, suspension stroke in there relatively low leverage and it's a trunnion mount as well which keeps the whole setup super sensitive at the top and then the standard 9.7 EXE comes with a, a Fox 36 rhythm on the front, but Joe at Summit has hopped up this one with a RockShox Lyric Ultimate. So you've got that latest Charger 3 damper on the top there, and you've got that buttercup system in the bottom to, in theory, take some of the sting and some of the fatigue out of the fork. Although it's not a forgiving fork, very, very focused, very quiet, very, very controlled, but certainly around the uh, rocky descents around here, not the most forgiving or comfortable fork, proper races fork. But in this case, I actually think it works really, really well with the back end on this bike and the overall stiffness of the frame. But I'm kind of straying into what I should be talking about on the live ride here. So make sure you do go and watch that as well. In terms of geometry, this is a large. You don't get quite the spread of sizes on the EXE as you do on the Fuel EX. You go from small to XL rather than extra small to XXL, and there isn't a medium large in the picture either. But, you know, it's still enough of a range to fit most riders. And in terms of the numbers on this, this is set in the low position on the geometry. So you've got a 64.8 degree head tube. You've got a 76.8 degree seat tube. You've got 483 mil reach on this large. Then you've got 441 mil bottom bracket height. And then the back ends on all these bikes are 438 mil. So it's not proportional in terms of back end size. All the bikes get the same rear end. And in terms of travel, you've got 140 mil at the back and then 150 mil up front. In terms of kit, I've already talked about Joe's Lyric fork on the front there, but he's also taken off the standard code brakes and fitted these absolutely splendid tech E4 brakes on the front. Uh, a lot more power, a lot more control. My favourite brake of the moment. Uh, but apart from that, it's pretty much standard spec. So you've got Bontrager grips, Bontrager bars, Bontrager stem. He's left his fancy Berg tech, Berg tech stem cap on there and his Berg tech spacers, but we'll forgive him that. You've got a Bontrager dropper post on this large. It's a 170 mil stroke Bontrager saddle. We've already talked about that Fox Float X performance spec shock there. It's got the extra volume cam on it, and as I say, it's already got that uh, extra extra long stroke on the shock as well. And you've got a little E13 chain guard on top there and e13 alloy cranks and then moving to the back you've got an slx cassette with an xt rear mech and that matches the xt shifters up on the bars wheels are bontrager line comp 30s so 30 mil internal alloy rim with good chunky hubs on there and a bontrager se6 Team issue front tire on the front, that's 29 by 2.5, 100 TPI, that's the lighter tire on the front. And then on the rear, you've got a Bontrager SE5, again, 29 by 2.5, but that's the inner strength carcass on there, so a heavier duty 60 TPI carcass and a slightly different tread. And also worth noting on the back, you've got a super fast engaging rapid drive 108 rear hub. Uh, which is something you find on a lot of e-bikes. You'll get a relatively slow engaging hub, which is a bit of a letdown when the actual motor is really fast engaging. And actually you can see absolutely zero drag and really smooth action on that motor, even just spinning it backwards there. And before we wrap up, let's have a look at some of the frame detailing on here. See, you've got really nice top and bottom protection there on the chainstay. You've got another little mudguard flange there, protecting that main pivot and the uh, cable and uh, hose entry into the mainframe there. You've got, like I say, you've already got that 
chip in the back there, which not only helps you change the geometry by half a degree, it also means that you can set the back up for a mullet rear wheel if you want a bit more play playfulness in the back end. You've got these rocker links in here, both sides supporting the shock. You've got this really distinctive triangle setup that Trek have moved to in the centre of the bikes. Looking up under here, you've got an accessory mount there for putting a tube on or CO2 cartridge, whatever else you want to bolt on there. And you get a bottle cage as standard because up here is where that's your standard charging port, but it's also where you can plug in the range extender battery, which is a bottle cage size battery. And that adds another 160 watt hours of range to the 360 watt hour battery in the belly. And then moving up, I know something a lot of people are going to be pleased about. The cables go into the frame, not into the headset. And also on this bike, there's none of the knock block steering restriction you get on other treks. So those bars can come all the way around. Although I'll have to check uh, whether that's something that Joe's removed or whether it comes as standard without that feature. So that's a quick look at the static details on the bike. But as I always say, the main insight I can give you into the bike is how it rides. That's where my real experience comes in. And I love showcasing that live on the trails, which is why I always do point of view live ride footage. And in this case, it's live from the fantastic trails here at Cody Brennan. So I'll link that up at the end and make sure you watch that to get a full picture of just how well and how distinctively this Fuel EXE rides. But massive thanks to uh, Joe at Cody Brennan for setting, letting me borrow the bike. Massive thanks to Trek UK for supporting this video. Thanks to Giro Cycling UK, Petey's Products, Crud, Heb Troco, Enduro Bearings, and Talk Nutrition. And massive thanks, as always, to my Patreon supporters, or nearly, who pledge a monthly amount that really, really helps with the upkeep of the channel, and they get early, exclusive, and behind-the-scenes edits as a thank you. And they also get all those edits ad-free, so you won't get any of the interruptions that you used to get on standard YouTube. So if you really like what I'm doing in the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Otherwise, subscribe, click for notifications, and give this a thumbs-up, like, and tell your mates about the channel as well, because that really, really helps it grow, is your recommendation. But for now, I've been Guy Kestivan on the Cody Brennan Trails talking about the Trek Fuel EXE, a bike that has genuinely ushered in a whole new era of full control, full attack bikes with a far more subtle, natural feeling e-assist aspect.